The Twelve Steps to Holiness and Salvation Chapter 11 Prayer We ought always to pray and not to faint. Luke 18.1 According to the teaching of the angelic St. Thomas, the worship of God takes the first place in the order of moral virtues. It is occupied more with God and leads us nearer to Him than the others. For every Christian, therefore, who is striving after perfection, it must be a matter of no little concern to make this virtue his own in the highest degree. Now the easiest means of doing so, a means that we can employ at all times and in all places, is found in prayer. Whether it be the prayer or praise or thanksgiving or impenetration or, or propitiation, we are worshipping God. For every prayer is a humble acknowledgement of the greatness or goodness or fidelity or mercy of God. Vocal prayer or prayer pronounced by the lips is very pleasing to God because by it the endless majesty of God is acknowledged and glorified. The sacrifice of praise shall glorify me, says the Lord, by the mouth of the prophet David, and that is the way by which I will show him the salvation of God. Saint Mary Magdalene de Pazzi was almost beside herself with joy when she heard the sound of the bell that called the community to prayer. She left everything at once to devote herself to this holy exercise, for she felt that she was performing the function of an angel in proclaiming the praises of God. Qualities of Vocal Prayer in order, however, that vocal prayer may tend to God's glory and our own salvation, it must be accompanied by attention and devotion. Not only the pronouncing of the words, says St. Gregory, but also the devotion of the heart is required for true prayer. For in the eyes of God, our sentiments are of greater worth than the sound of our voice. If we wish, therefore, to please God, we must pray not only with the lips, but also with the heart. How could the Lord, continues the same saint, hear the prayers of him who knows not what he wants and does not even wish to be heard? How can you expect the Lord to hear you when you cannot hear yourself? says St. Cyprian. Prayer made with attention and devotion is like a sweet-smelling incense that is agreeable to God and wins for us treasures of graces. On the other hand, Prayer without recollection is insulting and offensive to God and calls down his wrath on the offender. If a subject came into the presence of his sovereign and while petitioning some favour, gazed about and occupied himself with irre irrelevant matters in such wise that he scarcely knew what he was saying, would not the sovereign be justly offended? For this reason, St. Thomas teaches, that he who permits his mind to wander about during prayer cannot be excused from sin, because by such conduct he seems to be guilty of contempt of God. The Lord might well say of many Christians what he once said to the Jews, They honour me with their lips, and their heart is far from me. It is easy to understand why the devil is so intent upon turning our thoughts towards worldly affairs during prayer. On the one hand, he desires to rob of us the benefits we derive from fervent prayer. On the other hand, he wishes to make us guilty of disrespect towards God and therefore deserving of punishment. But just on this account, we ought to strive more earnestly to pray with the greatest attention and devotion. Before entering the church, let us follow the advice of St. John Chrysostom and dismiss all worldly thoughts. The Holy Ghost exhorts us in the following words, Before prayer, prepare thy soul, and be not as a man that tempteth God. Try to bring yourself to realize that you are going to praise God and to beg for His mercy, both for yourselves and for others. Remember that the angels are looking upon you and are standing, as Blessed Hermann saw them one day, with golden censers, prepared to offer your prayers and holy affections to God as sweet-smelling incense. The angels that St. John the Evangelist saw held golden wheels of incense and odors which were the prayers of the saints. 
in a word think before prayer that you are going to converse with god and to treat him with some very important affairs then the lord will look upon you with a gracious eye and turn an attentive ear to your petitions offer him beforehand the prayers you intend to say and beg him to preserve you from distractions during prayer avoid haste many people when praying seem to be intent only upon reaching the end of their prayers as if it were a torture that must be endured but during the shortest time possible such irrelevant haste can hardly be pleasing to god or profitable to ourselves zeal and fervor says st agustin gradually cool off and like a fire become extinct unless they are kept alive endeavor from time to time to renew re- your attention while at your prayers and devotions attention during prayer must be both interior and exterior exterior attention requires that you abstain from everything that is incompatible with interior recollection for example it would hardly be proper during prayer to speak with others or to listen to a conversation that is going on or to gaze about at every distracting object interior attention is threefold it may be directed to the words you utter or to their sense or finally to god attention is directed to the words when you are careful to pronounce them well it is directed to the sense of the words when you try to understand their meaning in order to unite suitable affections of the heart with the verbal utterance you direct your attention to god and this is the best kind of attention when during prayer your mind is fixed on god with a view to adore you adore him to thank him to love him or to ask him for his graces distractions as long as you strive to persevere in proper attention at prayer you need not be disturbed by involuntary distractions provided you do not consent to them they can do you no harm the lord has compassion on your weakness distracting thoughts often enter the mind when we have given no occasion for them whatever such thoughts cannot spoil the effects of our prayer according to the illustrious st thomas even favored souls cannot always remain in the heights of contemplation the weight of human infirmities bows them down and occasions some involuntary distractions on the other hand says the same holy doctor he cannot be excused from sin nor expect a reward for his prayer who entertains distractions that are voluntary as a good will makes our thoughts worthy of spiritual fruit says st bernard an indolent will makes them unworthy of the lord and therefore instead of a reward they receive only punishment the annals of cities contain the following vision which st bernard had one day when at prayer with his religious brethren at the side of each of the brethren he saw an angel who stood who stood and wrote some of the angels wrote with gold others with silver still others with ink and some with water while a number held the pen in their hand without writing at all at the same time god enlightened the saint to know what this meant the gold denoted that the prayers of those particular brethren were said with the greatest fervor the silver indicated that the devotion of others left something to be desired the writing in ink meant that the words were carefully spoken but that no devotion accompanied them the water was intended to show that the words were carelessly pronounced and little or no attention paid to what was said finally the angels who wrote nothing at all were standing beside the brethren who knowingly entertained voluntary distractions the devout words which the lips pronounce awaken devotion in the heart says the angelic doctor for this very reason the lord has taught us to use vocal prayer in order that the heart within may desire what the lips externally express in regard to the words of david i have cried to the lord with my voice st augustine writes many call upon the lord but not with their voice that is to say they call on the lord not with the voice of the soul but with the voice of the body call with your thoughts call with your heart and then the lord will certainly hear you ejaculations the easiest means of practicing vocal prayer 
consists in uttering fervent ejaculations. These pious outpourings of the heart need not be restricted to any particular place or time. They are in order at all times and in all places, at work, at meals, at recreation, at home or far away from home. They may take the form acts of desire, conformity, love, oblation or self-denial. They may be acts of petition, thanksgiving, humility, confidence and the like. The saints of God placed greater value on these little prayers than on long devotions because the former are more calculated to keep us in the presence of God. St. John Chrysostom says that he who frequently utters ejaculations closes the door against Satan and prevents his constant annoyance with wicked thoughts. It is by acts of love, conformity and self-oblation together with, together with the invocation of the holy names of Jesus and Mary that we give the greatest pleasure to God. One who loves thinks constantly on the object of his love. A soul that loves God will therefore always think of him and seek occasions by fervent sighs and ejaculations to manifest her love. Be careful on all occasions, alone as well as in company, to say frequent to your heavenly bridegroom, O oh my God, I desire only Thee and nothing else, or I give myself wholly to Thee. I desire what Thou desirest. Do with me according to Thy good pleasure. These few words alone are enough. My God, I love Thee, or my love, my all. You may also, without uttering a word, raise your eyes to heaven or cast a loving glance at the tabernacle or the crucifix. These silence acts are especially to be recommended because they require no effort. They can more frequently be made and are often intended with greater fervor than other ejaculations. The best acts of love, of course, are those that well up from the depth of the heart at the impulse of the Holy Ghost. The perfection of divine love consists in the union of our will with the will of God. Therefore, we may not desire anything but that which God desires. If we do His holy will, no matter to what station in life the Lord may call us, we shall surely arrive at sanctity. It will be profitable then to select choice passages from Holy Scripture and to repeat them often in order to foster a union of our will with the Divine. For example, say often with the Apostle, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? In contradictions and afflictions of body and soul, say with our blessed Redeemer, My God and my Father, be it done to me as thou wilt. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The Lord recommended to St. Catherine of Genoa, every time she, sh she said the Our Father, to pay particular attention to these words, Thy will be done, and to beg for the grace to fulfill the will of God as perfectly as the saints in heaven. The Holy Names Among all ejaculations and prayers, the invocation of the holy names of Jesus, Mary and Joseph should have the first place. All that we love and desire and hope to possess is summed up in these beautiful names. The holy name of Jesus fills us with, fills us with consolation. For when we invoke him who bears it, we find comfort in all our troubles. The name of Jesus is called by the Holy Ghost, oil poured out. And rightly so, for the oil serves as light, as food and as medicine. The holy name, according to St. Bernard, is a light. By this most sacred name, we are happy children of the true light, that is, faith in the true Church of God. The holy name is food for the nourishment of our souls, for it strengthens the faithful and affords them peace and consolation in the midst of the misery and persecutions of this world. Finally, the holy name is medicine for him who invokes it. When the light of this name appears, says St. Bernard, the clouds are dispersed and the heavens remain serene. When the clouds, when the soul is tossed about by the storms of trouble or sorrow, she needs but to call on the name of Jesus and the storm will subside and calm will be restored. Should you have the misfortune to fall into sin and grow diffident to pardon, 
invoke the sacred names and hope of forgiveness will revive in your soul saint peter tells us that there is no other name under heaven given to men whereby we must be saved jesus christ has not saved us only once he is continually saving us by his merits when in in accordance with his promise he frees us from the danger of sin as often as we invoke his holy name whatsoever you shall ask the father in my name that i will do therefore saint paul exhorts us not to neglect this great means of salvation assuring us that who whoever calls upon the name of the lord shall be saved with the holy name of jesus we must unite the beautiful name of mary the name of mary like that of jesus is a name from heaven above and it is so powerful that all hell trembles when it is pronounced at the same time it is a name of exceeding sweetness because it denotes the exalted queen who is at once the mother of god and our mother a mother of mercy a mother of beautiful love as breath is the sign of life says in germanus the frequent in invocation of the name of mary is a sign that the grace of god is within us or will very soon be there the holy name of mary has particular efficacy in overcoming temptations against holy purity happy is he says saint bonaventure who loves thy holy name o mary thy name is a glorious and wonderful name they who invoke thy powerful name at the hour of death have nothing to fear from the assaults of hell finally it has always been a laudable practice of devout christians to unite with their names of our lord and his holy mother the beautiful name of saint joseph if the king of heaven and earth conferred on him the honor of being the foster father of his beloved son and the protector of the son of the immaculate mother surely it behooves us to honor him and invoke his particular intercession saint teresa says that she never remembers to have sought his aid in vain jesus mary and joseph i give you my heart and my soul jesus mary and joseph assist me in my last agony jesus mary and joseph may i breathe forth my soul in peace with you mental prayer or meditation our divine redeemer has no need as saint ambrose says to retire to a lonely place to pray for as his blessed soul was constantly in the presence of his heavenly father in every place and in all circumstances he thought of him and continu- continually interceded for us nevertheless as saint matthew relates having dismissed the multitude he went into a mountain alone to pray and when it was evening he was there alone he did this to teach us the necessity of interior prayer or meditation the eternal truths are spiritual things they cannot be seen with the bodily eyes but only with the eyes of the soul that is to say by reflection and meditation it is for want of meditation that as the holy ghost says all the land is made desolate because there is none that considereth in the heart hence the exhortation of our lord let your loins be girt and lamps burning in your hands these lamps says in bonaventure are devout meditations for during interior prayer the lord speaks to us and enlightens us thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my paths saint bernard compares compares mental prayer to a mirror and the comparison is very apt for if you happen to have a speck speck on dirt on your face and you come before a looking glass you see the dirt at once and remove it had you not looked into the mirror you would not have the thought of the dirt nor washed it away so it is with mental prayer while at meditation we are standing as it were before the mirror of the soul it is then we recognize our faults and the danger we are in and accordingly we take measures to rid ourselves of the faults and to escape from the dangers that threaten us saint teresa once wrote to the bishop of osma although we appear to have no imperfections we discover that we have many when god opens the eyes of the soul as he does in meditation he says in bernard who does not meditate 
will scarcely ever perceive his faults, and as a result will have no horror of them. Without meditation or mental prayer, we are lacking in strength to resist the assaults of the enemies of our soul and to practice the Christian virtues. Meditation affects the soul as fire does iron. If iron is cold, it is very hard and cannot be worked out, worked with great difficulty. We put it on the fire and as often as once it softens and easily yields to the comfort of the blacksmith. In order to observe the commandments and counsels of God, we need have of a pliable, that is to say, a docile heart, a heart that will easily receive the impressions of heavenly inspirations and as readily respond. It was for such a heart that Solomon prayed, Give to thy servant, O Lord, an understanding heart to discern between good and evil. And the word was pleasing to the Lord that Solomon has asked such a thing. In consequence of sin, our heart is by nature a hard and obstinate, obstinate heart given to pleasures of sins and opposed to the law of the Spirit. Therefore the Apostle complains, I see another law in my members fighting against the law of my mind and captivating me in the law of sin that is in my members. But under the influence of grace which we receive in meditation, the heart will soon grow docile. The sight of God's goodness and mercy and the wondrous proofs of His love serve to inflame our hearts and we listen with joy to the voice of our Lord and Master. St. Bernard, when writing to Pope Eugene III, begs him to never to omit meditation, though many and weighty affairs may claim his time and affection. Necessity of Mental Prayer Without mental prayer, we shall never practice the prayer of petition as we ought, and this prayer of petition is absolutely necessary for eternal salvation. Pray without ceasing, says the Apostle. We are all poor beggars, as David once said of himself. I am a beggar and poor. Now the only hope of the poor is to ask alms from the rich. In our spiritual poverty, our only recourse is to beg God by prayer for the graces of which we stand in need. St. John Chrysostom says, Without prayer, it is absolutely impossible to lead a virtuous life. Whence, the universal depravity of morals, asks the learned bishop Abeli, is not from the neglect of prayer. As we have seen before, the absence of meditation makes us blind to our own condition and needs. Hence, we are led to neglect the prayer of petition. A great servant of God once said, Meditation and sin cannot exist together. And experience teaches that those who are zealous in the practice of meditation rarely, if ever, fall into God's displeasure. A soul that loves meditation, says the royal psalmist, is like a tree that is planted by the running waters. It bringeth forth fruit in due season, and all its actions are meritorious before God. The Method of St. Alphonsus For the exercise of mental prayer, it is well to follow some approved method. The method of St. Alphonsus is a very commendable one because it is both simple and practical. He divides the meditation into three parts, the preparation, the consideration and the conclusion. With regard to the preparation, he says, Endeavour to dispose both soul and body for this important exercise. Dismiss all distracting thoughts and say what St. Bernard said on entering the church. Remind here all you earthly and distracting thoughts. I may have leisure for you after meditation. Recite briefly an act of faith in the presence of God together with profound adoration of His infinite majesty. Humbly ask pardon for your past offenses and beg for light and grace to make your meditation well. Recommend yourself to the Blessed Virgin Saint Joseph, your guardian angel and your holy patrons. These acts must be very fervent but brief, so as to proceed at once with the consideration. For the meditation proper, it is good to use a book, at least in the beginning, so as to hold the attention of the subject for consideration. Pause from time to time when you are particularly impressed, in order that like the bee you may extract the honey from the flower or like the dough, 
take a drink and then look up to heaven before taking another the importance of mental prayer however consists not so much in the consideration as in the affections petitions and resolutions which must accompany it the consideration may be likened to a needle and the affections petitions and resolutions are the thread of gold that follows it the affections will consist of short and fervent acts of humility confidence and gratitude frequent repeat aspirations of love and contrition for these are the links of the golden chain that unites the soul to god one act of perfect love is sufficient to obtain the pardon for all your sins charity covereth a multitude of sins says st peter st thomas teaches that every act of love merits a new degree of glory perhaps the most important part of the meditation is the petitions which you address to god the lord loves to be importuned and therefore never weary asking him for light and grace for conformity of his holy will and perseverance in good above all things beg him earnestly to grant you his holy love with love says st francis de sales we receive all other graces before the venerable father segneri studied theology he contented himself while at meditation with considerations and affections but finally says he himself god opened my eyes and from that time on i devoted myself to petitions and if there is aught of good in me now i owe it to this beautiful custom follow the example of this holy man and ask in the name of jesus christ for all the graces you need for god has promised to hear and answer your prayers amen amen i say to you if you ask the father anything in my name he will give it to you at the end of meditation proper it is very useful to make a special resolution to avoid some particular fault or to be more zealous in the practice of a particular virtue this resolution must be repeated until the desired end is attained outside the time of meditation we must endeavor to profit by the opportunities afforded to carry out our resolutions the conclusion of the meditation consists in the following acts first thank god for the enlightenment you have received secondly express your determination to carry out the resolution you have made thirdly ask the heavenly father for the love of jesus and mary to grant you the grace to be faithful to your resolutions it is a beautiful custom at the end of meditation to recommend to god the souls in purgatory and all poor sinners nothing says st john chrysostom proves our love for jesus christ better than the zeal we have to pray for our brethren st francis de sales counsels us to gather a spiritual nosce from the meditation and to enjoy its perfume throughout the day he wishes to say that we should select one or two thoughts that have impressed us in the morning meditation and recall them frequently during the day to reanimate our fervor and to preserve the fruit of the morning meditation if you are annoyed by distractions during mental prayer recall to mind the words of st francis de sales if you are occupied during the whole meditation in fighting distractions and temptations you will have made a good meditation the lord looks on the good intention we have and the effort we make and these he rewards in an- in another places he says in prayer we must not seek the delights of god but the god of delights ask and it shall be given you seek and you shall find knock and it shall be opened to you speak lord for thy servant heareth